Hello folks, I hope that you are having just a great, great day today. Today I'm going to be taking a look at another book of Fred Saber Higgins books in his Complete Book of Silt Lords series. We're going to take a look at the next book. Um, and this book I just finished yesterday, Coin Spinner's Story. Um, and it was a lot of fun, I really enjoyed it. Um, I read it pretty quickly. Um, I, I devoured it pretty quickly. And now there are three novels left in the series, so I'm definitely going to start. You know, the next book. We'll see what what, what winds up happening. I've ordered the last two. I actually don't own them, uh, so, so I ordered them a couple weeks ago. Hopefully, I'll get them in time uh, to knock them out uh, after I knock out book, the last the last book, uh, uh, the third and final book. But we're going to take a look at Coin Spinner's story for you. Now, once again, um, Fred Saberhagen is a, this is a very influential person. Uh, he, this, uh, the, the prelude to this series, Empire of the East, was in, in Appendix N by Gary Gagax. It's very influential in Dungeons and Dragons and thus through Dungeons and Dragons modern fantasy uh, as well. Um, I really enjoyed the, uh, the first trilogy, uh, The Complete Book of Swords by Fred Saberhagen, which I read when I was a kid. Uh, and it was the it was the first adult book uh, of of any sort that I read after I read J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings, um, and I really devoured it. And I loved it. It was really influential on me. And I've read it multiple times since then, um, and I've gone back and reread the trilogy several times. Um, and then I went back and reread it again for you folks about a couple months ago now. Knock it out. Had some fun with it. Really enjoyed it. Um, one of the things that I've, that I've really done for you now, now this, this book series, basically what's happened, um, is that the, the gods have created a set of these God forged swords that were created by Gavulkan, um, that are set about the world, um, as part of a game. Uh, and so, uh, the gods have done a lot of sort of, sort of gaming, if you will. And, um, in, you know, in the, uh, the first chapter of the first book, in the series, in the prelude, you'll find out quite a lot's going to be happening. That sets you up for the the world that we're at. Um, uh, a smith named Jord in the far corners of the world is brought into Vulcan's Vulcan's smithery. Um, he'll forge uh, the swords along with Vulcan. He Vulcan will slake uh, the uh, the boards, the swords in the human in human blood. George's the only one that will survive. He has an arm chopped off. He's given Town Saver as payment, um, uh, which he's supposed to have and give to his uh, kin. That's one of the Twelve Swords. And um, so he does. He has uh, his eldest born sword, will wield the sword, defending the town. Uh, a few years later, in chapter one of the first book, um, he will. there's a huge attack that happens in the town. It's very well funded. Um, and Town Saver actually kills every single person and beast that's attacking the town. Um, and does so quite ably. But unfortunately, what winds up happening is, is that it doesn't defend the person who's using it, so the person who uses it dies uh, and uh, while defending the town and, and saving it. Um, the younger brother, Mark, seeing this, takes the sword and runs away with Town Saver. And uh, the second and, and, and the other born son of Jord uh, and his wife. So he will, will, will head out and he will adventure he'll run and, and, and run away and flee um, <coughs> um, and so he is now fleeing with with town saver um, and then he becomes your main point of view character for the series um, and and he's still one of our major point of view characters in the sequel series um, there are three books. These were written in the uh, early 80s, 83, 84, something like that. Um, and then the rest of the books were written um, over, over years in the mid to late 80s or a couple or, or in the early 90s. Over, over the next few years, there are eight books in our series. Each of the books sort of, sort of um, in, the, in, in the sequels kind of focuses in on one sword, if you will. And Mark um, is a major character uh, in the first three books. Uh, each book will introduce new characters. That will also be a key part. Book two introduces uh, new characters like the Baron. Book three, Derek. And thus, uh, the books have, have a lot of fun stuff that are happening to them. Um, now, Mark is is one of the point of view characters in, in, one, in, in one of the um, books. The Wound Healer story, which is the only book that I had actually read before 
Um, I went back and have, have done more of the series. Um, I only read the first four books. Uh, and now we're much deeper into, into the series. Um, and I'm reading these books for the first time, which I really enjoy doing. Um, Coin Spinner story is the Coin Spinner is the sword of luck. Uh, Mark has had it before. Um, the sword will dance out of the hand of the person who's using it. It will give them a lot of luck, but then it'll stop. Uh, then it will sort of leave that person behind, and that person is faded. They no longer have that sword. And then there's one sword in the series that is the Deus Ex Machina. And that is Shield Breaker's story. Um, in the first chapter of Sight Blinder's story, um, the big bad of the of the of the series uh, of these of the sequels um, captures Mark in Shield Breaker, which is the most powerful sword, and he keeps it, um, so he still has it. Um, and so that's not good. That the most powerful wizard, who's also the most powerful bad guy, who's also uh, has has the most powerful sword. That's not a good combination. So anyway, coin spinner story, um, coin spinner will, will result in a lot of luck. Basically, we're going to open up in a chapter um, in our home kingdom of Tassavala, uh, where several of our people are, and we're going to be following Prince Christina, who is the uh, princess, rather, Christina, rather, um, who's one of the rulers of the, um, of the country. And um, there are going to be some a delegate of folks from a nearby nation of Colm. Um, somebody there has 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 a, is, so one of their higher people is severely injured and there's a sword called wound healer that tassel has the uh, hands that they let anybody come and use even people that aren't aren't, aren't, aren't from from tassel um that will heal their wounds so it's one of 12 swords and um they have requested that that they, the person can't come and and come can't come and see it's high up in their courts uh, and so um, they requested that a delegation be sent from Tassavalta to Colm, to nearby Colm, and bring the sword with them. And then, you know, once once that person is healed, then bring the sword back. And she's like, look, I, I can't do this because, I, you, know, you know, you and I both know the sword's not coming back if we send it, if we send it out there, right? Right, you guys would keep it. No matter what you guys might say or vouchsafe against it, you guys would keep it. Um, so they're refused um, several times. So on the third day after after their petitions, um, they the Colm folks head out um, and they steal Wound Healer on the way out. Now how could they steal Wound Healer? Wound Healer was really well guarded. The lock on the door uh, was broken uh, and in such a way that it, it looked like it was working but it was actually broken. One of the guards is bitten by a, a, a very, very rare snake that has a very poisonous thing. Um, there are a lot of these, these luck things that seem to have happened. Um, and they realize very quickly in the first chapter that the only way that all this unlucky stuff would have happened is if the person who's using it had coin spinner. So they must have had coin spinner with them. Um, coin spinner got them uh, got, got them into to wound healer and then they, then they escaped with wound healer. So um, the Tassel Valtons will set out to go chase down our, our folks, and that's the first chapter of the novel. We'll also follow Prince Adrian, who is the son of Princess Christina and Prince um, Mark, the other ruler, and one of her point of view characters. He'll be a major point of view character. He's, he's, a, he's a very, very strong wizard. He's about 10 now, um, so we're gonna be following him. He's a big point of view character too uh, in this series. Uh, we'll also follow some of Princess Christina's uh, henchmen as they follow the, the Colma delegation now let's go and we'll also actually have point of view characters in the coleman delegation too as well as a, a woodsman um and multiple members of the coleman delegation two of them in fact okay. now i am normally i would not do this normally i would only give you the first chapter or two and then set you up but there's something that happens in book four i'm sorry before chapter four rather that's really really strong and what's going to wind up happening is, is that our big bad is going to show up. He's going to know where, where Coin Spinner is. And he's going to show up in Chapter 4 and he, using Shield Breaker, which is immune to all the swords. It's the Deus Ex Machina of the swords. Um, he is immune to the, to the sword's effects, um, and he winds up getting this sort of chance. And now he has two swords, the, the Deus Ex Machina and the Lux Sword. And you see how, how powerful the Lux Sword actually is. I'm bringing luck for the person. Um, so now our big bad has both shield breaker and a coin spinner, which is not good for the world <laughs> at all, um, on his side. Uh, so, uh, and that happens in chapter four. 
all of the series, so I, which I think is pretty cool. So I'm also letting you know that, that kind of happens, which kind of elevates, uh, you know, the, the threat level of the big bad, who already has, who's already the most powerful wizard, and uh, already has the Deus Ex Machina, and he uses the Deus Ex Machina to get another strong sword, the Sword of Chance. And then that's it. Uh, so I'll go ahead and leave you to it. Have you read the you know coin spinner story? It's pretty good. I give it a seven out of ten. Um, I'll, if, if you if you read it, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, uh, see, let, let me know what you thought about it. I'd be happy to engage with it in the comments below. Whatever your take is on it, um, or for something that you want you want to do a deep dive on, I would be happy to engage with further in the comments below. If you like this video, why not hit that subscribe button? There's going to be a lot more of these to follow. And then finally, hey, I just want to thank you for taking some time out of your day and watching my video. We have so many things that are happening in our lives, right? I've been pulled in so many different directions. So the fact you spent this time with me is incredibly humbling, and I appreciate it. So thanks again, and have a great day.